Greetings, viewers. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And I really hope to figure out what it is that I'm gonna do in this video. Uh, because I, I have an idea of the direction I wanna go, but uh, I will say this. A bunch of old rusty parts will be removed and new shiny parts will be installed before the time this video is done. How about that? Specifically what I'm looking to address for starters on my 2005 Honda Element is it has a common issue that elements seem to have and that the rear tires are cambered in, they're negative camber at the top. So I'm gonna be addressing that issue, but at the same time, I'm also gonna address a few other things that might be going on back there at the same time, including uh, the CV boots on the rear differential. One of the inner ones is leaking and I figure since I'm gonna to have to take apart a bunch of stuff in order to address that, I might as well you know, fix some other things along the way, such as the rear struts. Anyway, let's go back to the rear suspension. I'll show you a little bit about what I'm talking about and we'll get started on the work. How's that? In my case, there are actually two causes for this negative camber issue and it can most clearly be seen here on the left side. One of the issues is this bushing on the upper control arm that you can see right here. You see that orange dust and stuff around it? That bushing is gone, which means that upper control arm, when it's, comp when it's down on the ground, moves inward a bit and that allows the top of the tire to come in. Additionally, what happens over time with coil springs is they start to sag. And as such, the suspension compresses a little bit. It's designed to go negative camber for cornering. It becomes, a the camber becomes a little more negative in the process of those coil springs sagging. So today, I'm going to replace these upper control arms with some cool adjustable upper control arms, which can address the issue of the sagging coil springs over time and allow me to precisely dial in the camber back here. But I'm also gonna be replacing the complete strut assemblies, uh, coil springs and everything back here as well. In addition to that, <laughs> on my older element, or my old green element, I should say, I had a problem with these bushings on the stabilizer bar wearing out and when they got to a certain point when you would go over bumps it would cause this weird noise so i have new bushings for both sides that i plan to install and given that we'll be having to disconnect a whole bunch of the stuff back here in order to do the alignment you'll notice that this is sort of on an eccentric this bolt back here i'm going to loosen this stuff up and make sure all of this stuff moves properly so that when the alignment is done it can be done with ease relative ease but wait there's more i put this whole lower suspension everything together new bushings in the control arms and i was very happy with the result except i started noticing this noise just in general just going over little bumps all the time seeming to come from the right front here well that top coil on the coil spring is busted so additionally i would like to install new front struts and springs here which i also have and I thought, what the heck, since I'm in here, I might as well replace the tie rod ends because that'll mean just about everything on this front suspension has been replaced at that point. And that's not all. Yes, I've already gone ahead and replaced the rear bumper on this element. It actually had some collision damage, so I'm glad that I did it, but it was also just as rusty as the other two that I've replaced. I won't be covering that in detail in this video, obviously, but I have in another video that I will link down in the description for you. To sum it up, you're gonna to get to see a whole lot of suspension work on this element today. And elements really didn't change all that much through the years, and I believe they made them from 03 to 2011. But here's the cool part. If you have a CRV, the CRV of the same vintage was built on the same platform. So this information will also apply to CRVs from like 03 to 2011. Keep watching. You probably noticed a bit of the shiny stuff underneath here. When I did the rear bumper, I went and sprayed some rust protectant on all the rusty areas uh, to try to prevent further corrosion. Anyway, we need to get these axles out of here. In order to do that, I kind of need to get this knuckle and everything loose. And as I stated, we're gonna be replacing these upper control arms. So I'm gonna remove these all together. I'm hoping what I can do after removing this upper control arm is just sort of take this whole knuckle and allow it to come down so I can pull the axle out, uh, which will necessitate loosening these. And as I stated, I'm gonna try to loosen these up enough, take them out and put them back in so that uh, it's easy to do the alignment. I don't wanna mess with the brakes in this video. Eventually, I'll get to these things because I, you know, I've talked about these missing screws and other stuff that I wanna address, but there's still plenty of friction material. So I've got, I've got some time before that becomes something that I really have to worry about. But for now, I'll remove the calipers 
and I can lay them off to the side. That way I don't have to worry about any damage to the brake hose or any of that. There's a 12 millimeter right here holding the uh, brake line to this knuckle assembly. I'm going to remove that uh, so that I can just get the brakes totally out of the way here. And I'll just take this bungee cord, hook it to the caliper. It should give it a little more support. Axle nut is 32 millimeter. Ooh, that's a good sign. Not gonna have to fight with it, it's not rusted in there. I'm gonna think of it before I get too far and start pulling axles out of this rear differential. Probably should drain its fluid. I plan to change it anyway. I'm gonna ratchet back. I want it back. This gets double pump fluid, by the way, which I won't be putting back in until I'm done. And while that's draining, let's have a penetrating oil party and take a close look at this on the inside. Anytime you see this orange dust, something's loose. So I'm glad we're addressing that today. I think it's drained enough. These plugs are interchangeable. And I'm just gonna run the top one in the fill in finger tight, but I am gonna tighten the bottom one so I don't forget. And this top one will keep any dirt or debris out of there. I'm gonna start by trying to remove this upper control arm. A couple of plastic clips hold this ABS sensor wire, which I do not want to damage. In fact, if I'm smart, what I'll do is I'll follow it, wire back to where the plug is and unplug it. If we unplug it at the source, it won't strain anything. There. Won't have to worry about damaging the ABS sensor. To me, it looks like it's gonna be a lot easier to get to this fastener if this strut isn't in the way. So maybe I should work on getting the rear struts out of here. Let's just get a read on how this guy is gonna react. Cause these are the same as uh, the Civic that I worked on and that they may become one with the bushing and need to be cut away. But I'm prepared because I have new bolts in case that's the case. Ugh, it's not looking good. Somewhere in there, I lost my mic. I'm not sure exactly when, but to recap, removing the rear struts to gain better access to the upper control arm bolts. The one on the left side, well, there's nothing for it. I'm gonna have to cut that one out, but I got new bolts along with the struts in anticipation of something like this happen, which is something that I suggest you do as well. By the way, parts and everything will be down in the description, at least part numbers at the very least. Anyway, looks like I'm gonna have to cut out the left side, but the right side uh, came out. So th that one didn't fight me. So I was able to remove that. That one's out, we're good there. But we got to do a little cutting here on the left side. Oh, we know where this movie's going. I was hoping for that. And what did that cost me in blades? Let's see, one, seven, only seven. Now we need to get to those upper fasteners, which are located back here. And you can just pry up on this cover and look who's there, Mr. Strut. And there's two fasteners, 14 millimeter on either side that hold it in. And this one too. With those upper fasteners removed, hopefully they come out. And this actually looks like I gotta take the charcoal canister down on that side. That one comes right out. That right side is agreeable. Left side, I've been fighting with you the whole way. Looks like two fasteners and I can have that charcoal canister. One of them is located right here. The other one right there. Oh, that sucks. Of course it had to break. At least that one acted like a real fastener. Oh, now you want me to get another one up here. That one looks even crustier. Bolt biters, man. They're my friends. Will you come out now? 
finally. These aren't bad necessarily. I'll keep them around at least outside. I don't know why. I'm a hoarder, I guess. Here's the part numbers for the new ones. I know that's upside down, but that's complete assembly. There's the other side. Here are the bolts and the part number for those. Now my little bit of thread repair that I'm gonna have to do there is gonna be a lot easier without this axle in a way anyway. Now I'm gonna focus on getting these upper control arms out and also getting all this down here loose so that this whole thing can pivot down. 17 millimeter. Moving. Oh, sweet. That is awesome. So probably what I'll end up doing, I mean, this is actually working fantastic. Probably what I'll end up doing is taking this all the way out anyway, just to get some anti-seize on this. I am very happy that these seem to be moving. Excellent. Oh, thank you. Push the axle through so that it comes out for me. Ah, perfect. We got our axle. Now let's finish with our upper control arm. I didn't see that. That was the uh, parking brake cable. It was getting pretty stressed. I'm gonna undo the 12 millimeter holding it to the body. Feel way better about that. Yeah, that sleeve and that bushing, that's pretty much done. I can probably knock that right out of there. This was probably contributing to that camber issue. And because we're installing adjustable versions of this, we'll be able to compensate for any sagging coil springs or anything in the future. This bushing up here seems okay. And you might wonder, why don't I go through and replace all of these bushings while I'm here? Well, simply because bushings are a pain in the butt to replace. And if they're not bad, I'm not gonna worry about it. But I'm future-proofing this. Remember, I'm gonna go through and anti-seize all these bolts and fasteners. So whenever I go to take this apart again in the future, it's not gonna be a big deal. At least that's the plan. I'll confess to never having had one of these out before. If they're anything like front axles, you just pry them out. They're just held in with a C-clip. And they do, they just pop out. Sweet. Before I swap the boots out, I think I'm gonna come in here and do a little housekeeping. Clean up this grease. Put some rust protectant on the areas that are exposed. I realize the grease is kind of doing that already. We want to make it nice, right? I want it to be nice. How about you? There's the reason we're here. Figure might as well do them all. Like Pokemon, gotta catch them all. And here is the partner. So all four boots are the same. I have plenty of rags on hand for this. This is the baby version of a regular CV joint. The beauty of getting these from Honda is that they come with a tube of grease and everything. You don't have to reuse the old grease. This piece has a snap ring up in the top here that needs to be removed so you can slide the new boot on. I have this pair of snap ring pliers that I'm gonna use. You're supposed to come off when I remove the snap ring. Since we're replacing both boots, we can do a little trick. Oh, it definitely needs a new blade. So these are basically two inner CV joints and they likely do this because there's no steering back here. So there's no need for the complex joint that they normally put on the outer. Uh, really, it just needs 
to change effective length as the suspension cycles up and down. And inner CV joints do that very well. Now, because we already took this off on the other side, we don't need to take it off on this side. And that was my premise for cleaning this up. And we're back. And this is what I've been up to. Uh, I cleaned everything up with the axle and the inner and outer CV joints and all that stuff. So those are all ready to be reassembled. I also came back in here and there was still a little bit of bolt that was stuck in this end piece. And I tried to get it out, but I ended up knocking this whole thing out. Uh, once I did that, I removed the piece that was stuck in there. I ran a tap down through it. And now we're at this point where I've run the bolt here to hold it in place. Well, I just put a couple of tack welds on here just to hold it so that it's similar to the way it was when it was uh, original. I also went up here and drilled and tapped that hole out so that we can reattach the charcoal canister. I also cleaned and painted the axle. And I've been using this Eastwood chassis paint. And I've been using VHT for a long time, but I tried this Eastwood stuff and honestly, I like it a lot. Anyway, this is all ready to be reassembled. All of these pieces are ready to be reassembled. After cleaning these up, I found this interesting. Normal front CV, inner CV joints have like a bearing assembly here. This, is, this isn't a bearing, well, I guess it could technically be a bearing, but there's no like needles or rollers or anything in it. It's just this piece of metal that you see here uh, that they use on these smaller joints. I found that interesting. This is the first time I've had one of these smaller ones apart. I found these neat little things for my vise. They're magnetic and they, uh, they're made of plastic, so you can put things in here and that shouldn't mar them up, so my freshly painted axle uh, shouldn't get damaged by the metal on my vise. I think life is easier with a little bit of silicone spray in here, just on the part that's gonna slide down over the axle. And this is why I didn't remove that end, and I spent so much time cleaning this up. I'm just gonna put this on like this, slide it all the way up to this end. All right, so that one's placed, but now we'll install this side. I'm going to try to put these a little bit out of phase. I don't know if it really matters, but it can't hurt. So the Honda part comes with new snap ring and everything, new clip all that stuff for both inner and outer and a new axle nut, which I will use. What I'm most interested in is the special lubricant. Sort of separate it a little bit. There's like a little notch in the axle that the boot just sort of fits into. So it knows where it wants to be. Use every bit. It's yellow because it's made from banana peels. I know that sounds gross, but it's necessary. Could I have painted these also? Yes. This type of band requires a special tool to use. So this will slip down into the end and then you see that slotted. So it goes into that slot and then you turn this and it will draw it tight, bend it over, and then you cut it. I will demonstrate. Doesn't matter which way you go around, just make sure that your positioning is correct. Pretty much get it in there snug. Cool thing about this little end piece is it lifts up. So I can lift this up and then straddle the band. And I wanna make sure I get my positioning correct. I'll just tighten this. And that snugs it down. Bring it over. Can lift this up out of here. Slide it back. That's one. I like to burp them. They're not going to move a whole lot. And you don't want to fill them up with air because when they compress, they'll force the grease out. <clears throat> I 
Doesn't seem to matter which way these go on. I just want to make sure that they have freedom of movement. They're not sticking or binding. Now there is a reconditioned axle. And now for the fun part, putting it back together, which fingers crossed is easier than taking it apart. Aerogenics was kind enough to send me these control arms. This is the mount for the ABS sensor wire. It looks like it can be mounted in several locations. Anyway, they also sell other things for elements. In fact, I've seen people turn these things into like overland vehicles and they sell a lot of those things, including heavy duty rear coil springs. So if you wanted to upgrade the coil springs and you're gonna put a lot of weight in the back of the element, well, that would be the way to go. But these are gonna be the adjustable upper, rear upper control arms that uh, should allow for any camber adjustment as these things may sag over time. Before I do install it, I kind of want to make sure that it's the same length as the one I have on here now. Let's see what we can do to make that happen. That looks pretty close at least. Before I get too far, get my bolts ready. Because of course they're getting a liberal coat of anti-seize before they go in. Especially the part that goes in the bushing. I ran these uh, through my wire wheel to knock off the surface rust. Also, the threads will engage a little bit easier. These guys seem to know how to make an adjustable upper control arm, unlike some people. Won't mention any names, Moog. Both the inner and outer bolts were the same. I don't know if I mentioned that. This came out this way, so I'm putting it back in the same way. Now all the control arm fasteners, in particular, the ones that go through bushings, I'm gonna wait and tighten until I get the wheels back on and it's on the ground and the suspension is compressed. Can tighten that one, no problem though. Let's see if we can get that strut in there. Ah, uh, that would fit nice. Since that connector broke and I was unable to salvage it, there's a really nice hole right here in this rear subframe that I just tied that down with a zip tie. It's supposed to go up here in that slotted hole. I'm gonna do a legit brake service on this. Before I go there though, I'm gonna pull these bolts out, clean them, a little bit of anti-seize. These will also get tightened on the ground. I'm actually considering replacing these lower control arms, just these three fasteners and this one in here, and that'll take care of that part. And then debating on ordering and getting those parts in before I do the alignment, because the alignment's like the red line as far as everything being done. I'm gonna go clean this up on the wire wheel and I'll be back. This nut is on an eccentric that you can see. And the inside of this is such to where it will come in contact with the bolt in two ways. So you wanna make sure that this is the same as the other side. So if this bulge is facing downward in the front, you wanna make sure the same is happening on the back. That way that you're not making it all wobbly, making it do the same thing on both sides. 
Yeah, there we go. And the eccentric is now facing down on both sides. Get that NICs in there, yeah. Again, waiting until it's on the ground to fully tighten things. But aside from the brake service, this side is done. This side is really just a mirror image of what we just did, or what I just did, and you hung out with me. Like, you're just sitting there right now, so, you know, dead weight. I'm, I'm kidding. Light, Aziz, light. Also, thank you. Awesome. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Side doesn't seem as bad as the other. Bushing's still intact. Got to really watch this parking brake cable on both sides. So I've got extreme bungee cord action up here to try and keep that guy from getting too strained. There's a convenient little spot to put a screwdriver right up in here. Gonna clean it up, repaint it, and we'll be back. All right, we're all cleaned up, ready for assembly. I took a different approach with this this time. Instead of running it through the sandblaster, I actually took it over to my wire wheel and found it to take half as long and be just as effective. Anyway, let's get this put together and back up in the element. Okay, let's install it. I've already set the length of the upper control arm over on the bench. I've already got my bolt free anti-seized and ready to go. Excellent. Now we just need to tie up a few loose ends and we can't forget about refilling the rear differential. I think it'll be easier to reconnect those lower strut bolts if I fasten them up at the top. Put the covers back on now too. I've developed a new method for lining up this bolt. It involves one of these gear wrench pry bars and then my other pry bar. It's coming in under like this with this pry bar to get the bottom part in position. And then I can just sort of manipulate everything into place and I can get the bolt right in. Lots of NICs. Not gonna run that down all the way until it's on the ground. Now I can tie up the other loose ends like uh, parking brake cables and ABS sensor wires. As far as this ABS sensor wire goes and the bracket that holds it to the new control arm, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna remove this bracket right now. I'm gonna tighten up both of these jam nuts so that they don't work loose and wait till after my alignment is done to reattach this. I'm just gonna zip tie it up here for now and that way, when they go to do the alignment, they have access to this and, well, easier access to this. And then afterwards, I'll come back, reinstall the bracket and hook this on there properly. 
In case you were wondering, these are a number four Allen. And these were a 24 millimeter. And hopefully this will keep things from getting tangled up until then. Now we'll do that to the other side. And I think we only got one more thing to do back here. Now the last thing I said that I would do back here is replace these stabilizer bar bushings, which I'm gonna do now. Fingers crossed the penetrating oil was effective. These are 12 millimeter. So far so good. Seems like somebody has already put a nut on the backside. Same thing here. Something gives me the impression that somebody might have already been back here. And I don't mind at all that I'm gonna go in and at least on this side, have to put the nuts on the back side. Don't care. Everything came out and I don't have to drill and tap or any of that kind of garbage. These are pretty simple. Let's take the metal part off. They're split. Open them up like that. And we can just get the new ones and put them on. There is the part number for the new ones. They're both the same. This is just something I like to do. A little bit of silicone paste on the inside of this will allow things to move and hopefully be less noisy. And to prevent future worry, that's right. They're getting a little bit of anti-seize before they go back in. Especially with rusty fasteners, I like to start them by hand before I commit with the impact. Just to make sure the threads are engaged properly. Last thing I wanna do is create a problem at this juncture. I'm not as worried about these because I started them with the nuts and I know they're in there securely and straight. You know, I'm really glad you said something because I almost completely forgot about filling this thing back up. And that would be a gross oversight. And I'm filling this up with Honda Dual Pump Fluid 2. There's a sticker on the outside that says that's what this one takes. Some of them take automatic transmission fluid, so be sure to check your owner's manual to find out which type of fluid your differential takes. This takes a little more than a quart. So if you're filling this up, get two quarts. But you won't use all the second one, sadly. And use whatever means necessary. I'm using this hand pump, but you just fill it up until it comes running out. Make sure you're on a level surface when you do it though. That's it. Once it starts dripping out, it's pretty much there. Maybe change this fluid about every 60,000 miles or so. During my initial inspection of this when I first got it, I noticed that these plugs were missing to access the uh, rear parking brake. I didn't like that. Also, the screws were missing. Uh, so I got new ones. So I got a new rubber plug here, and I'm going to install new screws here. The part number for the plug, in case you're weird like me, is that it's the same for both sides rotor screws gonna be that put some anti-seize on the threads of the rotor screws before i install them i know i'm weird but i like having them there it makes installing the pads and everything that much easier so i've done a video just about these rear parking shoes and replacing them and all that i'll link that in the description there will always be more info in the description of my videos. So if you have questions, look there. Well, viewers, as I said at the beginning of the video, I wasn't quite sure where this video was going and I'm gonna have to split it up into two parts. It's become so large. This is the end of this video, but in the next video, I'll cover the front suspension. And actually, you remember those control arms I talked about that Aerogenics had? Well, they sent me some of those, so I'll install those 
get the alignment done, install some tires, and go for a final test drive. So there's more to come in the next video, so be sure not to miss that. When it's available, I'll put a link to it down in the description. For now, if you have questions about anything you saw in this video, also check the description, parts, tools, stuff like that, as well as a link to ericthecarguy.com if you have automotive questions. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope to see you next week for the exciting conclusion of this. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and I'll see you next time.